For Minister Dix, we've seen a few examples. Uh, We reported one last night of clinics in smaller communities that have been forced to close. In one case, people have to travel uh, to trail from Grand Forks for dialysis because it's closing due to somebody not being immunized. How many cases do you believe are there across the province where, you know, medical clinics or medical facilities are required to close or will be impacted with schedules due to to staff not getting immunized? Uh, I think uh, you'll see where we see the most significant challenges. Uh, Let's give you areas because we're obviously working through this uh, throughout the province, but we see the most challenge in interior health because it has the highest rate of unvaccinated uh, people in the province and therefore less in Northern Health and then less in the other health authorities. And so uh, (laughs) we're hopeful certainly that some people, and we've been seeing this in the last number of days, will get immunized and we're hopeful that they do that and and, uh, address the problem that way. I think it's fair to say that in some areas, for example, um, uh, diagnostic, uh, diagnostic imaging or labs in different parts of the province, there will be some impact. And we'll either have to initially reduce hours in order to address that or provide other staff in the weeks to come. And uh, we're working through that now. But obviously, um, we've been preparing for this. And in some areas, such as long-term care, where we've hired uh, thousands of workers, close to 6,000 workers in the last year as part of our uh, health care program and healthcare assistance program, we were able to respond more quickly. In areas um, where people are more highly um, credentialed and require more time to be trained, it uh, is more of a challenge. So overall, uh, 97% is a high level of, uh, of uh, vaccination. If you look at uh, both partial uh, one dose, which is a small percentage, and full dose, which is closer to uh, 95% across the province. But there are, there are challenges because our health care system uh, is dealing with two public health emergencies and lots of demand after 20 months of the pandemic. But those are the areas that uh, we have some issues in that we're identifying and working on. Uh, diagnostic imaging is one, um, a lab is another, and there will be some impact on surgery in interior health uh, in this week. And uh, just as we did in long-term care, we'll be making adjustments uh, to deal with that and supporting regions, uh, in particular in this case, as we have for Northern Health, as we have for interior health in the the past, or Fraser Health, we'll be providing additional supports to ensure that uh, a high level of care continues to be provided. But look, um, it's a big challenge, and it's uh, and uh, but a necessary one in order to ensure that people are safe in a time of pandemic. For the next question, we go to Shannon Patterson, CTV. Oh, hi, Minister Dix. Along the same lines, can you tell us out of those 4,000 or so uh, workers in the healthcare field who remain unvaccinated, how many of them are direct patient care workers, doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, people who work directly face to face with patients? Well, what I can tell you is if you look across the system, so first, long-term care and assisted living, that was two weeks ago. But there are obviously fewer categories of employers, fewer employees in those categories. So in the large categories uh, in uh, long-term care and assisted living, there wasn't any real difference in the vaccination rate um, with credential, right? So our healthcare assistants were within, they were actually the highest, I think, in the categories, but they were within decimal points of registered nurses and uh, licensed practical nurses, which are the main categories. There are other people, obviously, who support long-term care homes. So we didn't see across the board much difference in terms of categories of workers. And that is true as well in acute care. So while there are um, administration staff and and others who are, uh, who are um, uh, who are unvaccinated and will be affected by this across the healthcare system. Uh, this 126,000 uh, workers, they're critical, all of them, to patient care for people. And there's not really a significant difference as to class of employees. So um, nurses and healthcare workers, healthcare assistants, uh, health sciences professionals, um, overall in the large numbers and and indeed doctors have very similar rates of vaccination all extremely high but um, but a lot of the people affected are in patient care as we um, go through uh, the numbers and uh, obviously 
today is uh, still a day when we're hoping uh, people get vaccinated when we produce the final numbers. We'll provide you, as we did in, um, in long-term care and assisted living, with uh, some numbers by category so you can see the impact on, uh, on uh, medical staff and on healthcare worker staff, it's called medical staff, but really the difference between the two, um, they're both really on 97% is not significant. So if you look at the number of people across the categories, it's about uh, 3% and there isn't very, very much variation as to uh, health profession or worker status. Shannon, do you have a follow up? You spoke earlier about uh, terminations in long-term care for people who still, um, you know, a couple weeks later have, have not gotten vaccinated, have not returned to their jobs. Can you give us numbers of people who are imminently going to be terminated? Well, we will. I mean, the long-term care sector is slightly different than the healthcare sector, as you know, Shannon, because we have our uh, publicly funded beds, which are roughly 30,000, just under 30,000 across the province. About two-thirds of those are uh, either nonprofit or for profit providers are contracted beds, so we are contributing uh, and supporting the patients, but the care is being provided there. And then there's the direct health care uh, owned and operated. Uh, so, um, as we said, the numbers are in the range of uh, 1,800. Now, again, all of these workers are people who have worked at least one day, so a significant number are casual employees. Nonetheless, this applies essentially to that whole group of employees. And again, over the next couple of days, we'll, um, we'll update you uh, on the, that information. But it's a, very, uh, it's, a, it's a very solemn thing because all the people who work in our healthcare system, I think, work with great commitment. And uh, um, all of them do. And um, this is um, a very strong action needed in a pandemic. To protect healthcare workers, other healthcare workers, other healthcare professionals, patients, and the public. But it, it's also uh, a very solemn thing for people who have contributed to the care of others to be facing that. And, uh, and we're certainly hopeful that many of them will choose to get vaccinated um, and get back to work.